Thomas Edison, Richard Branson, John F. Kennedy, Mozart, Michael Jordan, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of vocations. Why is it that we rarely hear that they have or had ADHD? And you know what we hear even less about? Serena Williams, Emma Watson, Mel Robbins, Whoopi Goldberg, Agatha Christie, Aaron Brockovich, Cher. Yeah, the successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka. I'm a lawyer, not a doctor, a lifelong student, now a coach. I'm also the creator of Your ADHD Brain is A-OK, a system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your strengths, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest gifts. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, I am Tracy Atsuka. Welcome to episode 91 of ADHD for Smartass Women. Today, I am going to be speaking with students who have just completed my new program called Your ADHD Brain is A-OK. This program basically teaches you how to fall in love with your ADHD brain. And AOK will be launching again next week on October 5th. I'll tell you more about it at the end. So I just had the privilege within the last couple of weeks of guiding 100 plus ADHD women through your ADHD brain is a okay. You know, it was our first time launching this program. So I call it AOK 1.0. For those of you who don't know what AOK is, it's a coaching program that I built using my patented cartography system to help ADHD women figure out the answer to that, what do I do with my life question. Together, we figure out the answers to questions like, what do you value? What's important to you? What are your strengths, talents, passions? And finally, what is your purpose? Or at least what neighborhood does your purpose live within? You know, when we're very young, it often takes us some time to get some experiences under our belt to really get clear on our purpose. But I have to tell you, even at a very young age, it's quite obvious what neighborhood our purpose lives within if we make the time to reflect on it. Now, I absolutely believe in ADHD coaching. I'm an ADCA trained coach. But I built AOK because I discovered that ADHD coaching, and honestly, any kind of coaching, it's a lot less valuable without a foundation. I mean, what is the point of being on the highest tree in the forest if you're in the wrong damn forest, right? We need that foundation to know that what we're working hard on moving forward is actually what we want to move forward. And a lot of us don't know the answers to those questions I posed above because we've never taken the time to really work through them. I mean, no one teaches this, right? Rarely do we do this kind of work at home or in school. So I created Cartography and AOK because for decades I had been trying to answer that, what do I do with my life question? I'd read every self-help book, took countless personality tests, I hired career counselors and even a life coach, but I just couldn't connect those dots in a way that was useful to me. You know, and I always thought there was something not quite right about the fact that I seemed to care so much more about this, what do I do with my life question than my friends did. I chalked it up to the fact that I was more ambitious. You know, we now know that drivenness is a form of hyperactivity. And yes, I now know that this was a big part of my ADHD, the sense that I knew I had more potential than I was actually tapping into. One of the things that really hit home for me in AOK 1.0 was this realization that this need to live to our potential, it's an ADHD thing. And I saw it 
in all of our AOK students. We, more than anyone, have this need to make a difference. A nine to five job, collecting a paycheck, working for 30 years, and then riding off into the sunset of retirement. Well, it just isn't us. And AOK really confirmed that for me. In order to live to our potential, Obviously, we have to be passionate about what we're working on, right? We really have to be working on the right things in order to tap into that passion. But what are the right things? We have these ADHD brains, after all. We don't have a deficit of attention like they tell us we do. We have a surplus of attention. We are interested in so much. So how do we make sure that of our many interests, we are pursuing the right one? That is when I decided that what I really needed was a step-by-step system to tidy my ADHD brain and make sure that I never forget what I already have learned about myself so I wouldn't continually be reinventing the wheel every time I get sidetracked by another bright, shiny, squirrel-like object. You know what I'm talking about, right? My brain needed a process, it needed a structure, it needed a system, and that's how your ADHD brain is A-OK came into being. I created it first for myself, and then I realized that I wasn't the only one who needed it. I wasn't the only one who was looking for it, because this is the deal. 25% of answering the what do I do with my life question is building the foundation. It's knowing the answers to the AOK system question. So what do I really value? What are my strengths? What am I passionate about? What do I do really well? And what neighborhood does my purpose live in? That's the foundation that you actually build your life on. So instead of going from the outside in and trying to fit into, well, what's my Meyer Briggs or what's my strong inventory assessment, it's about going from the inside out and really figuring out who you are and what's important to you. Because the other 75% of the what do I do with my life question is actually just becoming more of that 25% that you already know you are. And we do this 75% with action, but you want to make sure that again, what you're acting on is what you really should do, what you really want to do. So if you want more information about the foundational elements of the AOK program, you can check out episode 76 of this podcast where I talk all about it. And I'll put the link to that episode in our show notes at tracyoutsuka.com forward slash podcast. In this episode of ADHD for Smart Ass Women, however, I decided to do something different and probably a lot more fun. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking to a few of our AOK graduates who will share their story and then chat a bit about how AOK has made a difference in their lives. I knew that the AOK system works, but my fear with ADHD women was, could I get them to do it? Could I get them to complete it? What I discovered is I could absolutely do so. And in fact, our ADHD students, they truly loved learning about themselves and they loved learning about their brains and how their brains work. And this was so instrumental in sparking joy and getting them to understand just how brilliant their ADHD brains actually are. And it wasn't just one or two or a few of them. It was every single one of them. I also learned that it's much easier to fall in love with your ADHD brain when you have a community of like-minded women rooting you on. I absolutely loved this AOK group of strength-focused, brilliant, funny, earnest, kind women. So I would like to introduce you to a few of them. We have Haley Lynn, who's in her 20s, Trinley Chodron, who is in her 30s, and Julianne Decker, who is in her 50s. So let me start by introducing you to Haley. Haley is 25 years old, and she was diagnosed with ADHD two years ago while in college. Haley graduated last year from the University of Toronto with a specialist in computer science and a major in cognitive science. And I already asked Haley, is that right? Is it specialist? And she said, yes. That means that 
I have a double major, one major in computer science and another in cognitive science. Did I get all that right, Haley? Yes, you did. (laughs) Okay. I also wanted to mention that you are a makeup enthusiast. You actually have two full bookcases of makeup and a social media account with 470,000 followers. Haley is cheerful, and she loves to bring positivity to others. And Haley's number one value is living to her full potential. So welcome, Haley. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And maybe we can start with you sharing a little bit about your childhood. Are you an only child, Haley? Yes, I am. And where did you grow up? I grew up in China, and then I moved to Canada with my dad when I was 14 years old. When you were 14. Okay. When you were younger, what were some of your symptoms and your experiences around those symptoms? Like, how did you, I'm assuming you thought, oh, I'm different than these other kids. Is that true? Yes, I I always feel like I I was that weirdo in the class. I do. I feel like I'm different than everybody else, but I didn't understand that was my symptoms. I got distracted from um, the class. And sometimes when I'm not listening, the teacher will call my name and ask me to answer some questions. And I get super embarrassed and the shape of myself. And... That just destroyed my self-esteem when I was a child. Yeah. And so what did your parents think about this? My parents didn't really care about it. They required me to have a group great, but they didn't really ask anything beyond that. Okay. So what happened when you would get a bad grade? I will just get a lot of... You need to study harder. You're not trying hard yeah. enough. That- yeah. yeah, I will just get a lot of judgment. And I remember as a child, like when I have a bad grade, I'm really scared. I'm terrified to call my mom or I I just don't want to go home. I'm wondering around my school. I just I'm too scared to go home or also like I was so afraid of being judged by my other classmates and teachers. I feel like the teachers dislike me. So it was really stressful to go to school. Yes. And I didn't have mailing friends. Did it create anxiety for you? Yes, it did. I I never enjoyed my time as a student. It was never a good experience. Hmm. Gosh, I'm really sorry to hear that. I mean, just think about this, and I want our listeners to think about this. Even though you struggled that hard, you still had this idea that I want to go to college. Yes. Where did that come from? I think one of the reasons it, it's I was living in other people's expectation and I really didn't think there is an other way except for college. I didn't know what to do if I don't go to college. I would consider myself a failure if I don't go to college. Mm. And what were the circumstances around your ADHD diagnoses two years ago? So at that time, I was really struggling in university. I kept failing courses. I almost didn't make it into my major. And so at that time, I thought I have something like anxiety disorder. And then I was diagnosed with ADHD. I always struggled in school since I was like in Uh, middle school, high school, but I didn't struggle as much as in university because everything just got a lot harder in university and it's computer science. It's especially hard. I bet. (laughs) And then you double majored as well. Yes. Okay, Haley, so let's talk about AOK. So when you started with AOK, what did you want beyond what you already had? I was at a life transitioning stage. I had a lot of things going on. I just graduated and I moved to a new country, new city with my boyfriend. And then we got married. So there was a lot of things going on and I was feeling super lost and confused. At that time, I am working with the ADHD coach, but it's just I worked with her for two years. I feel like I learned 
everything I could from her. She was being helpful with the strategies, but I, I'm eager to learn more. I want to figure out myself. I want to really know what to do in my life. So I had just made the comment earlier that. I think ADHD coaching is really great about helping you discover and learn about your brain, but it doesn't do a very good job about learning about you specifically and who you are. Would you agree with that? Yes, yes. Because I thought when I was diagnosed with ADHD and I was referred to an ADHD coach, I thought that can solve every problem in my life. But I still have so many questions. I still have a lot of things to work on. Like ADHD coaching doesn't solve everything. So, what was the thing that you specifically wanted to achieve that you weren't getting from ADHD coaching? Like my life directions. What should I do in my life? Like finding my values and just knowing my strength. Okay, so you somehow knew. That that's what you needed, but you just couldn't seem to get there. Yes. And was there anything that you had done to try to figure that out before you started with AOK? Yes, I tried to read books. I tried to research like self development on the internet, and I watched so many ADHD related videos. I really want to be able to understand myself more. Got it. So, when you signed up for AOK, was there anything that you were worried or concerned about? Yes,、uh, there were a lot of uncertainty. I feel like it's more like an investment for me. I don't know what it would turn out, but I was so desperate to figuring myself out. So I and then I went. I was hesitating because of the price, but I'm also doing ADHD coaching, so. When I compare the price of ADHD coaching to the course, it, I feel it's not so bad. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would say, you know, it's maybe two or three coaching sessions. Yet, it literally will set the foundation for you know your entire life as far as where you should be going, what you should be doing. Yeah. So, what was your journey like working through AOK? So it was like an adventure to me. It's like a process of finding my strength and values in a positive way. It's like a self-discovering process. And what is different now as a result of going through the AOK system? I mean, did you feel like you got those answers, those pieces that were missing before? Yes, I do feel that. I feel I have more clarity of my life. I have. A better understanding of my value and strength, and like after this course, I feel like I found the starting point of my future direction, and I feel more in control and confident of who I am. That's wonderful. So, can you give us an example of that? So my favorite part are the value and strength, the step two and step three, because as an ADHD woman growing up, I had so many judgments and criticize. So most of the time, I feel like a failure. I feel like I've done nothing. I'm always comparing myself to others. If they can do it, why can't I do it? So I was feeling worthless. For a very long time, and after finding out my value and strength, it's like a really big surprise to me, and that really boosted my self confidence. And what surprised me the most, I think it's the same as when I was finally diagnosed in college two years ago. I walked out, and I was feeling so relieved. And because I was confirmed that I was not lazy or stupid, there is a reason behind everything, and I can I could fix it. Like I kind of have that same feeling when I was working on the my values from this course. So I have my value as positivity and fulfillment, make a difference, and thinking, learning, reasoning, and. 
sincerity candor. I love every one of them. That just that made me feel more confident. And I think the most surprising part for me is when I see everything on this value list. It's like my life made more sense, and I understand why certain things happened in my life. I understand why I'm I'm friends with someone, and I'm not friends with other people. And I I always had doubts about myself, and after seeing this values list, I no longer have those doubts. I feel more comfortable in my life and in my relationship. It just helped with my life in general. You know that's just so true. There is something about once we understand ourselves, then we can start the building the workarounds. Right when we know, oh, that's why I did that, or that's why I did that other thing. And sometimes we do stuff that maybe is not so great, and we could beat ourselves up about it, or we could understand or figure out why it is that we behaved in that manner. And I think that's the beauty of an ADHD diagnosis too, though, right? Yeah. Now, I wanted to share something with our listeners, a struggle that you had kind of in the middle of AOK. And I remember you shared with me that you knew you liked to lead, you were comfortable leading, and you shared several instances in your life where you led and you did it really well, but you still weren't sure you could lead. Because part of it, I think, Haley, was you you told me, well, because you're so young, like, who's going to listen to me, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and at one point, I told you, of course you can. You can lead people that you're one step ahead of. So perhaps you start with leading young people. And that's when Haley said to me, this was so cute. She said, she sent me a message and she said, uh, I have something to tell you. I have a social media following of somewhere around a half a million young women. It's a makeup channel, but I haven't done anything with it for a while. And I just, I literally, Haley, I threw my phone down and I laughed because that is such an ADHD thing to say, honestly, where you are clearly leading. I mean, how at your age (laughs) do you have a social media following of almost a half a million people? half a million women, and you're still kind of like, I'm not sure if I can actually lead. I think I'm too young. It's that overview that we sometimes miss, right? We we know the specifics. And I think that that's why AOK is so helpful. Because, you know, even when you were saying that, you know, you would read the books, and you would take the workshops, and you would read the articles, and you had all these pockets of knowledge but you couldn't put them together into something that made sense for you specifically. And would you agree that what AOK does really well is it provides that overview? So it's kind of a bird's eye view that you can, you know, see everything and look down on it and connect it. Yes. I love how it made me realize what I'm actually good at. And it gave me a reason for, my success, like having that channel with almost half a million followers, I like I kind of I understand the reason of a lot of things, like why I can do certain things, and I have a, just a more clear understanding of my strength. Absolutely. So I think what you're saying is when you now look back and you see that oh, I have a half a million followers on this um, social media account now. After AOK, when you look at that, do you understand why you have those half a million followers? Yes. Ah, I just love that. That, (laughs) It gives me goosebumps. So thank you for so much for for sharing that. So why do you think that AOK worked for you? I think it worked for me because it gives me exactly what I want. I was... At the life transition stage, I didn't know what I should pursue. I didn't even know if my major was right for me, if I should continue with my makeup career. It gave me an answer. It gave me a direction. It gave me a heads up of what should I go next. So what did you decide to do after AOK? So I decided to continue with my makeup blog and... So I started to post, I started posting again after a year of not showing up on social media. 
and I feel I I feel so good about it, and I'm not so worried about like doing things perfect or doing things for others' expectation. I just I feel more confident, and I know what should I do now, and. I'm also working on a research project, so I'm not wasting any of my major. I'm still working with computer science. I just feel like less stress now, but I am doing more. That's fantastic. So, are you saying that after going through AOK, you realize that you have enough values and strengths to move forward with the computer science, but you also love the creativity? that I guess fed into other values and strengths that you decided, you know what, I'm going to continue on with the makeup. Yes. And when you started AOK, were you kind of thinking, oh, the makeup, you know, that that's not important enough. I should be focused only on the computer science. Yeah. Oh my God. That's exactly what I thought. I thought makeup is not supposed to be a career and I, I think I was still living in other people's expectation, my parents' expectation at that time. I I feel like it's just not a serious um, career for me to pursue. Yeah, I think um, a lot of us do that, huh? So I am curious now, what do your parents think? Do they know? They do know. And they actually support me with that. And they normally do, don't they? I think we have these ideas <laughs> that our parents, you know, we've got to do this path. And I know that there are a lot of parents who have these ideas. But ultimately, I think most parents, they just want us to be happy. Yeah. And I think the more confident we can become about, nope, this is my path our parents just calm down, right? And then they realize that, oh, well, she's very confident about that. So I need to just let her do it. I think it's when we're waffling around and we're asking everybody for advice and we're moving this way and stopping and moving that way and stopping. That's when our parents get worried and they feel like they need to give us more advice. What do yeah. you think? Yes, I I think at that time, because I asked her, I asked my parents for advices and also, I just wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not, but now I have the that determination. I just have less trouble, and I feel like I got more support from them, from my parents and my friends. That's absolutely wonderful. I don't think you'll regret taking this course. It will really give you this clarity of your life and help you understand yourself more. Well, Haley... Thank you so much for spending time with us here today and sharing your story. Where can people find you if they want to know more about you, your makeup social media account, or maybe they'd like to ask you a question or two? Yes. So I just recently started an Instagram account. I only have four followers on that, but if you want to, <laughs> if you want to message me, uh, it's 7am.hlz. The last letter in the alphabet, Z. HLZ. Yeah. Okay. So it's 7am.hlz. Yeah. And my makeup account is is in the platform Red, R-E-D. And my account name is Haley, H-A-Y-L-E-Y. And followed by two um, Chinese characters. It's Mu Mu. Okay. So... You're going to send this to me okay. <laughs> and I'm going to post it in the show notes just to make sure that we get it right. Okay. Okay. Now, I would like to introduce you to the truly energetic Trinley Chodron, who is joining us from the UK just outside. What the hell was that? I'm, I'm sorry. I was just closing the door and something just fell on the floor. I'm okay. Really sorry. Yeah. Tell me when you're ready. Right. Go, go now. Go now. I would now like to introduce you to the truly energetic Trinley Chodron, who is joining us from the UK 
just outside of London. Trinley is a pharmacist, a novelist, a teacher, a personal development junkie, an advocate of kindness and doing things that benefit humanity, but most of all, an ideation machine. She is entrepreneurial to her core. Welcome, Trinley. Hello, Tracy. I'm very honored you've asked me to come on to your podcast. Absolutely. So did I miss anything or did I get all that right? Um, well, I've tried my hand at being a journalist, um, several different careers that didn't feel right, PR as well. So I'm constantly evolving and reinventing myself. You are. I don't think I know anyone who's done as many things as you've done. <laughs> I can think of one woman, actually, that I know. So, Trinley, let's start by talking about ADHD first. Now, I understand you have not been formally diagnosed. Is that correct? No. Well, I should ask, do you think you have ADHD? Well, it wasn't even on my radar. I live in the UK where it's not that well known in adults and especially women. And like I used to be a pharmacist and... I just associated ADHD with hyperactive boys that were jumping on tables and very stereotypical. I didn't really understand much about it. So I didn't think I had it, but I just met someone by chance in Cornwall in the UK, very mild-mannered professional teacher who told me she she's from the Netherlands. She told me she had ADHD. I was really curious. I was like, can you tell me more about it? The more and more she talked about it, the more and more I said, damn, that sounds like me. And then I was, I was intrigued. I then investigated it and I could really relate to the inattentive ADHD, which is often missed in women. And that got me thinking, that started to explain my dreamy nature, my carelessness, forgetting things really my really poor at, with the executive function and then I started to look within my family and I looked at my father and I'm like and the genetic link and I'm like oh you seem to have the traits of ADHD as well so it was kind of a bit of an investigative process for me and then I got obsessed about it and then I just wanted to find out as much as possible I'm now on a waiting list to get a diagnosis and it's taking a long time. So I'm even thinking of going private. So did you struggle in school with schoolwork? Yes, I did. I did. I mean, I'm Indian origin. So I remember not even speaking English when I was growing up because I was raised by my grandparents at home while my parents, the, the typical immigrants, parents were out working really hard in the UK my grandparents couldn't speak any English, so I was be speaking Punjabi and Indian language. So I thought possibly it's, it's a language and just not tr not really processing things the same way as other kids. Like it was just a bit of slow, slower to get things, trying to make sense of things. And uh, I was just dreaming as well. And I, and I remember just getting really bored in class as well. And then when the education got harder as I got older, you needed a lot more executive function to organize yourself. So mm -hmm. I think I, I think I flunked a year because I just couldn't keep up. Okay. So Trinley, you believe you have ADHD, but you haven't been diagnosed with ADHD, but you still signed up for your ADHD brain is A-OK. -okay. Can I ask why? Um, I have a strong suspicion I had ADHD because forever I spent a lot of time in the wrong career, the wrong jobs, and then trying to find my way to the right career, the right place where I really felt me and I could really express who I was. So the AOK -OK program felt a really good fit. I like the fact that, you know, as people with ADHD, we forget what we like we forget who we are you know so I like the fact that this program would would take me through a process of finding my values 
finding my character strength, finding my, my talents, my skills, what I enjoyed, my passion, my purpose. And at the end of it, I have this one visual reminder of who I am and what it is I need to focus on because we have this short working memory and we forget. And even though I've done lots of um, soul searching, lots of personality tests, et cetera, et cetera, it was a real compulsion to do this. And I'm, I'm so glad I did this. Really, really glad I went through the program. I felt that you really understood our brains as well. And I felt that you really understood how from a very young age, kids like us, those really formative years, we are not understood. And we kind of grew up really confused and not believing ourselves. So your program really helped work out our own message and eventually have our own North Star. So that's why I did it. And now, Chinley, you had taken a lot of different programs, right, before AOK, trying to yes. really get solid on who you are, what are your values, what is your purpose, all of that. I have done a lot, everything. I've not left any stone unturned. <laughs> and one of the things that we discovered with the whole community of, you know, AOK members was, honestly, I think it's an ADHD thing. Yeah. We all have this need, like no neurotypical I've ever met, to live to our potential and to figure out who we really are. Yes, I would say so, 100%. We are not the sort of women who are happy to do our 95 and then maybe go to the gym and have wine o'clock with our girlfriends. That's not us. We really want to make our lives and our work and our relationships really count. And I, I love that. I love the fact that we all really had a strong desire to have a purpose to make our lives of meaning, which was amazing. I, I, is this an ADHD thing? I don't know, but it definitely wasn't A-OK for sure. Yeah, I think it is an ADHD thing. I think there is this sense of intensity that we have. And if we can find what it is that really interests us, there is no stopping us. And what I definitely have discovered through the ADHD Facebook group, you know, ADHD for Smart Ass Women is what it's called. What I've discovered through AOK and working through, you know, with the women that were part of it is that there is not one woman among us that is not brilliant at something. Mm. And it really is our charge to figure out what that is for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And so in creating AOK, my real goal was, you know, we tend to go whenever there's anything to do with self-development, we go from the outside in. So these are all the different structures. These are all the different roles. And where do you fit in? Versus with AOK, I tried to go from the inside out. So it's not about where you fit in. It's who you are specifically and how do you stand out? Forget about everybody else. You're not supposed to fit in because you're meant to stand out. And so my question for you is, after having gone through all these other programs and still obviously ending up here at AOK, so there was something that still wasn't satisfying you. What was it that was different about AOK? Did it work? Definitely, definitely. So, all the courses I'd done before, all the soul searching, all the books I'd read on personality, I love the fact that you, as our course leader, are so invested in all the the women that were taking part. I didn't think you would have the time or the capacity to do that, but you did. Um, the support amongst all the women was amazing. Um, there's a lot of cheerleading for us as we went through the course. There's a real community and a real camaraderie, which I think is so important. I have did not find that in the other courses I've done. and. There's not a lot of material to watch, so there's not loads of homework, but the exercises really do make you think. They're deep, they're intense, but like a good intense, because that's what you need to know when you are making a more aligned 
purposeful career. What was your favorite part? I, goodness, I think I had many favorite parts. I like right at the end when I got to when I got to the <laughs> final end and I was like, oh my God, this is what it's we've all been waiting for. The the final sheet. What was that sheet called again? Goodness, what's it called? The intelligence report. The intelligence okay? report. Yeah. yeah, which I still have to rewrite up. I was I was hoping to do that before this session, actually. Sorry. I love the intelligence report. It kind of highlights all your it was just really nice to uncover your top skills, your top values, your top character strengths. So I liked how we just got everything about ourselves and how it all linked in with finding your purpose, your central purpose. And that was a lovely feeling just to get to that that final part. And see how it all connects, right? Everything is all related. And when it's all related, then it's pretty clear the direction that you will want to go in and will yeah. succeed in going yeah. for. Yeah. You almost have this big finger pointing, like this, <laughs> this, this is the way to go because before you're like, where the hell? I don't know. North, east, south, west, up, down, you know. What, well, and that's our problem, right? We are interested in so much. Right. Yeah. I mean, they call it ADHD, attention deficit, and that is the biggest bunch of BS, because for us, it's attention surplus. There truly is so much that we want to do, and it gets overwhelming. Like, where do you start? Yes, absolutely. So this was a lovely course because it honored, it allowed you to honor everything about yourselves. And actually, you gave us permission to listen to ourselves, which actually, honestly, it really brought a tear to my eye. Because I'd never had that growing up. I never had any of my caregivers say, what do you think? What, where do you, you know, or society say, you know. So that was really nice. You giving us permission to say, look, this is about you and what you want to do. So Trinley, what would you say to someone who's considering signing up for AOK, but they're not sure? I would say if you really want to find out who you are, what you're into, what your values are. And if you want to have a purpose-driven career, purpose-driven life, then this is a course for you because this will help you kind of crystallize it all. And you're working with a really um, very competent, very compassionate coach who can guide you through this process. So I would say definitely do it. And the community is amazing as well. The community of women you'll meet in this course is so loving, so giving, and so caring and compassionate. It's really beautiful. Well, thank you. Before I let you go, where can people find you? So if they want to know more about you, or maybe they have a question that they want to ask you, is there some place that they could reach out to you? Sure. I'm on the Facebook group. Just send me a message on my name, as it is, Trinley Chodron. Okay. Trinley Chodron on Facebook. That's right. Perfect. And they can send you a DM there, a direct yeah. message? Perfect. Yeah, no problem. Happy to help anyone. Wonderful. And I'll put that in the show notes. I'll put the link to that as well. Thank you so much for spending oh, time with us here pleasure. today. My pleasure. And finally, I'd like to introduce you to the amazing Julianne Decker. Julianne earned her bachelor's degree in marketing from the University of Massachusetts and her master's degree in training and development from Leslie University in Cambridge. She is a coach and an expert in leadership program design and delivery with broad work experience in industries such as technology, banking, consumer goods, retail, and finance. So Julianne, welcome. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about your ADHD first. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. So when were you diagnosed? Well, officially, I was diagnosed for my 55th birthday gift to myself. I had known probably the majority of my life that something was different. I knew that I had struggles and I just sort of went with it because I didn't know any different. 
My parents didn't know any different. It was a generation that didn't really dig too deep to understand that type of thing. So I just went with it, but I struggled through high school. I struggled through college, but I was determined to make something of myself despite it. So I just kept going. Did you know that you were smart? I didn't. I didn't. I I really thought I was not because part of my silliness was it covered up for my forgetfulness. I was an incredible child that would forget everything. I would go down to play at the neighbor's house and their mother at the end of the week would call and say, we have a box of belongings for Julianne. And it ended up being kind of comedy and fodder for the family. We would talk about Julianne stories. I'd lock the keys in the car while the car was running. I'd forget things at school. And my father's saying would be, you know, Julianne, if your head wasn't attached, you'd lose that too. And so through that, I kind of got the message that these were funny stories and they were silly, but they also equated to me not being smart. So I did do some counseling at one point. How old would you have been? I probably was in my, I'm going to guess 30s. And I started inquiring about it and talking to a counselor about it. And she was like, well, if you're intrigued, I have somebody that you could talk to and, you know, they can assess you and find out if it's right for you. And so I agreed and I went and it was a questionnaire that this doctor asked me to fill out. So I brought it to my mother. So it was the first time, interestingly enough, I had a conversation with my mother. She seemed a a smidge apprehensive just in the, you know, what's this all about? And and are you sure you have something? I think you're fine. And all right, just to humor you, I I will do this. But it, it definitely took some nudging on my part to get her to do it. And as she was going through the questions that about how I show up in the world, I think there were some light bulbs that went on for her because she thought, well, that's interesting. That's interesting because she didn't know a lot about it. So it was really educating her in some ways. So she completed the questionnaire and then I did a self questionnaire and I brought it back to the doctor's office. And when I got there, it was this gentleman and he looked through the documentations. Now, again, this is really my second visit with him for this, what I'm expecting is some type of diagnosis or understanding of where my brain is at. Mm -hmm. And he takes the paperwork that's probably three to five pages long. And he just looks at it. There's no introductions. There's no niceties to me. There's no explanation of how he's going to work. He just keeps going, "Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm, mm, mm." And I am there for probably 15 to 20 minutes. And I even interjected a couple of times to get him to talk to me. And he said, nope, just give me a minute. And so about 20 minutes later, he looked at me and he said, yep, classic signs. You know, you have the big three, you have anxiety, you have depression, and you have ADHD. So by the end of this, you're going to be like most of my clients. I'm probably going to be your best friend. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you all of these medications and they're going to help you. And I walked out feeling like I got slapped upside the head. It wasn't just the diagnosis. I just felt like it was this dog and pony show. Like, what was that that just happened? It didn't, I felt like just from the sheet of paper, I feel like I needed something more scientific. Just the way that he treated it, it felt like I was just like one more in the the wheel. And he didn't explain at all what ADHD looks like, the symptom, nothing. No. Very brief, very succinct, as though this was just one more person that he was seeing throughout the day and diagnosing and coming to him. So what happened after you got that diagnosis in your mid-30s? Did you do anything with it? You know, I was so dismayed by the way that it was handled that it really was a turnoff for me. Did you not trust it? I didn't trust it. I didn't trust the doctor more than not trusting the diagnoses. I think I always trusted the diagnoses and I think I always knew that that was the case. So I just said, well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. What difference is it going to make? Just keep going. And so I just kept going. You were diagnosed how long ago? How many months ago? Uh, One year ago. One year ago. In January. Yes. Got it. Okay. So you went back. And got diagnosed. I did. And tell me about 
your second experience? How did that work out? So I decided that I want to do something that to me felt more authentic and felt more scientific. So I went to a very reputable hospital in the Boston area. We're known for our hospitals here. And I went to Brigham and Women's and they have a neurology center where they will test you. So I got approval from my primary care doctor to do that. And they brought me in for a three-hour test. And so about a week later, they brought me in and gave me the results and went through each various piece of the results to show me my diagnosis. And I asked the woman who was a neurologist, I said, you know, you've seen a lot of people, you have a lot of wisdom, you've been here for a long time on a scale of one to 10, where do you think that I fit in for folks that you've seen? So 10 being off the charts with ADHD and one being a mild case of ADHD. And she said, well, you're definitely probably a solid seven or eight. And I remember being blown away by that. I was like, well, I thought I had it, but I really kind of thought maybe I was on the lower scale. So it put some things into perspective for me, you know, where I was struggling and what were some key issues for me. And even in the diagnosis, I was struggling and I spoke up to talk about one of my struggles. And she said, what a great workaround you just showed me. You spoke up for yourself. And that is something that you are going to have to do more and more and more because not everybody knows your brain, Julianne. So you have to tell people what your brain needs so you can give it what it needs to be successful. So congratulations on your first step. And I was like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> look at me. So how did you feel when you walked away the second time? I definitely felt like I was home. I know that seems like something weird to say. I felt like. Uh, so you trusted it. I did trust it. I knew instinctually that I had it. I've known for a long time. Really, no questions asked. I knew I had it. I think there was a sense of relief, you know, like a documentation. Someone, someone in authority told me that I have this. Even when we walked through it, it made sense. You know, it was also clear there were some areas that I did well, you know, and there are other areas where I struggle. So it felt right. That sounds wonderful. Julianne, you are also one of our AOK graduates. And through AOK, I had the privilege of getting to know you. And so I wanted to ask you, why you chose to take AOK? Yeah, it was interesting. I was listening to your podcast. I was very impressed with your story. And I thought, well, what a great story. That I want that to be my victory story, that I learn about my ADHD and I persevere and I stand behind my signature strengths and I prop those up and I also grow and learn some life hacks for how I can become better. So I just loved your podcast and the timing couldn't have been better for me. I was in a career transition. Um, I had just come back from Singapore in January for a workshop and COVID had started to hit the United States. And then the business that I was doing started to evaporate a little bit because it was in-person leadership workshops. So I continued to do the workshops remotely, but it gave me more time in my schedule. So through that, I thought, you know, this could be an opportunity to really start to peel back some of this ADHD and more specifically, how it sits inside of you. Mm -hmm. So I think the timing was just right. Was there anything that you were worried or concerned about when you signed up? You know, absolutely. I mean, I feel like this is the story of my life, Tracy. On my shoulders, whenever I'm making a decision is, you know, an angel or a devil. So I get the email about your course and I'm like, the angel says, oh my God, absolutely. Julian, this was made for you. Perfect timing. The content couldn't be better. And it's with this woman that you've really learn to admire through her podcast. Like you have to take this. And then the devil showed up. <laughs> said, oh, really, Julianne? You're going to do this? Sure. You're not her. And so I had both of those things going on inside of my head. But I said, nope, 
things are going to be different this time. I'm signing up and I'm just going to give it my all. I can back out if I want to, but I am signing up today. And I signed up before I could say no. (laughs) You did the five second rule, right? I totally did the five second rule. Mel Robbins was in my head saying five, (laughs) four, three, two, one. Go. Mm Mm-hmm. So what was your journey like working through AOK? Like, how did it all turn out? It was fantastic. I mean, such a network of women in the community. I mean, that was something I did not see coming. I just thought I'd sit at my desk, I'd do my work, I'd hand it in and I'd get my checks and I'd feel good about myself. But the opportunity to talk in the chat and Facebook chat about things that were going on in my life where people would add to it or comment on it, but also things that I probably had thought about, but never was courageous enough to put into a chat. Those things were out there. And I thought, oh my God, I get to learn that I am not alone, that other people are going through this. And what brilliant women, because they had great hacks and turnarounds and advice and guidance and perspectives and opinions. I was like, such a plethora of wisdom that it just empowered me to keep going. Even in those moments where you feel like, oh, God, I've got a lot on my plate this week. Am I going to be able to do it? I was encouraged by everyone. And that was huge. So Julianne, what were you hoping to achieve? So for me, I felt like there was this a third, a third, and a third of my life that I was living. My first third was, you know, kind of the wild Julianne side that just lived authentically and did her own thing and uh, just lived life to the fullest. And then I went through another third of my life where I had some traumatic events happen in college that just kind of uprooted me a little bit and made me really focus and kind of get more buttoned up and become more organized and more disciplined about my work. And I kind of put a serious side onto my face. And there were a lot of value that came from that. But the last third of my life, I felt like you know what? I need to blend those two. I need to find some of that authentic, fun-loving, energetic, passionate Julianne and combine it with the strong, independent, smart, hardworking Julianne. And I wanted to take those two and meld them to find out, was I living my true passion? Was I doing the work that I was meant to do? Was I living the life that I was meant to live? And that seemed like a very big thing to ask of one workshop, but that's where I was at. And that was my hope. And through it, I I think I learned a lot. And I think I learned that, you know, everything in the two thirds of my life up until today were all gifts and all valuable lessons for me. And it's going to be what helps perpetuate me into the future. And into the future is probably going to look different because now that I have my values from this class and my superpowers and my passions and my signature strengths. I'm going to take all of those and really just recreate who I am. So did it help you get really clear on those questions that you had about, you know, what are my values exactly? What are my strengths? What are my superpowers my talents, my passion, my purpose. Absolutely. You're clear on that now. Well, I am because, you know, I always thought, well, I know what my values are. And then you gave us a list that was, you know, 60 values long. And I thought, oh, okay. (laughs) You might want to roll your sleeves up and take a deeper look at this. And it was a a very eye-opening. They're actually, Julianne, it's actually over 200. Oh, (laughs) But my mind probably would only let me say 60. 60 at a time, right? Yeah. I know it was a challenge in the sense of I wanted to be all of them. I just wanted to live all of these values and that it was quite a process to shrink them down. But that process was necessary. And I'm so glad I stuck with it because it really helped me to get clear about what my values were. And it's interesting because now when I'm out in the world today, something will happen. And I'll either have to make a decision or maybe I have an emotional reaction to something. And all of a sudden I go, oh, it makes perfect sense. It's touching upon one of my values. 
So for instance, my husband asked me to work on a brochure for him that was a you know, marketing brochure. And he just wanted to kind of put all these words and texts into it. And I had to keep selling him on a different approach. In the end, he ended up liking it, but it was really because of aesthetics and beauty is one of my top values. And it just didn't look right with all of that information. I wanted it to be clear and concise for the consumer because I was thinking about me as an ADHD person and I wanted it to look nice. And when we were done, I actually got to have a conversation with him about why I was so adamant in pushing back on him for it. And he thanked me for it, but he then also understood why it was so important to me. It wasn't just me trying to be a perfectionist or nitpick. There was a reason. And so I think that happens all the time now. It helps me understand why I make the decisions I make or why I show up the way that I show up. Yeah. And especially when we have ADHD brains, that is so important because we don't typically think like your neurotypical person would. Right. And when we can understand why we do what we do, then we can decide, okay, is this worth building a workaround? Right. Or is it like, screw that, that's who I am and I'm going to stick with it, right? Yes. And there's a lot more of that going on in my life now. <laughs> Like that, you know, I'm not justifying anymore. It's who I am and it's how I'm showing up. One of the things I always wanted to do was consider myself creative, but my brain won't let me think that I'm creative because I always say, if there are other people that are more creative than me, then I can't hold space in creativity. And yet there were several people that came back and wrote that I was creative and a creative problem solver. And I thought, Interesting. I think I'm creative. I want to be creative. And now the outside world is also saying, you show up as a creative. Why don't you just be creative, Julianne? And And claim it. Damn it. it. Damn it. (laughs) So So it sounds sounds like decision-making is now easier. It is. It is. I have something to connect it to to see if I am being authentic and if it makes sense. Do you know why AOK worked for you? I think it worked for me. Well, I do know why it worked for me. The course itself, which I haven't touched on at all, with a background in leadership training, training and development, I create and design workshops. And also I told you the sneak preview that aesthetics and beauty are important to me. So when I was taking this course, I thought, oh my God, this is going to be another course. It's going to be all over the board. I'm going to get confused. It's not going to make sense to me. It's going to be laid out in a way that makes it really hard. And I'm going to have to spend more time than I want to doing this. And oh boy. But I had faith that it was coming from you, somebody who was passionate about helping people learn with an ADHD brain. But I still went in skeptical because this is how I make a living. and. I could not have been, if I had designed it myself, I could not have been more happy with it. The videos were short snippets, but were so informative and so engaging and so real. Like you just show up so real, which I love about you. The worksheets were clear and concise about what we needed to do. You told us clear deadlines for when the work needed to be in. You gave us tools and resources to help us. And you were incredibly accessible for somebody that is as busy as you are. You know, I remember sending you a a voicemail through my text and I thought, you are pretty bold, my friend, but just do it this once and then don't bother Tracy again. And you responded back and were so generous with your commentary and it was so helpful and it was such a positive experience that I was like, wow. She's the real deal. Well, <laughs> I really didn't set you up to say no, this. <laughs> I know, but I felt like I'd do it a disservice if I didn't say it. So I really feel like that needs to be out there. Ah, oh, well, thank you. So before I let you go, if people want to find you, if they want to know more about you, if they perhaps want to ask you a question, is there some place that they can do that? So I would have them reach out to me at Julianne at theunobstructedview.com. 
I'm going to go right after this podcast, make sure that that link is up and running and connected. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm already hustling. I'm already hustling it. But I want to make sure, see, this will make me accountable. So Julianne, J-U-L-I-A-N-N at theunobstructedview.com. Perfect. Okay. So Julianne, thank you again. And that is what I have for you for this week. If you are interested in learning more about Your ADHD Brain is A-OK, -okay, our six-step system for falling in love with your ADHD brain, join our waitlist at tracyoutsuka.com forward slash waitlist. On October 5th, I will send you everything you need to know. If you like this episode with Haley, Trinley, and Julianne, please let us know by leaving a review. Our goal is to change the conversation around ADHD, helping as many women as we possibly can learn how their ADHD brains work so that they too may discover their amazing strengths. And your reviews, they really help in that regard. If you have a comment, a guest you'd like me to interview, or a topic idea for this podcast, you can go to my website at tracyoutsuka.com and leave me an audio message or reach out to me at tracy at tracyoutsuka.com. That's my email. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Outsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Not coincidentally, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, it's also the name of our free Facebook group. We're a totally smart ass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. Join us at tracyoutsuka.com where you can also find more information on our Your ADHD Brain is A-OK -okay system. I spy a happier life for us, and I'll see you again next week.